Nicole Thomas. I'm an educator at the National Air and Space Museum. You may have heard the phrase, teamwork makes the dream work. Maybe you've seen it on one of those motivational posters. Maybe you've even said it to your class while you were teaching. As cheesy as it may sound, when it comes to the International Space Station, the ideals of teamwork couldn't be more important. The International Space Station, or ISS, took 10 years and more than 30 missions to assemble. It's been in orbit since 1998. It is the result of unprecedented scientific and engineering collaboration among five space agencies, representing 15 countries. This space station is approximately the size of an American football field, a 460-ton permanently crewed platform orbiting 250 miles above the Earth. The idea of creating a space station and Earth's orbit started out as only fantasy, until 1969 when the first rudimentary station was created by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in space. In 1984, President Ronald Reagan made a State of the Union address directing NASA to build an international space station within the next 10 years. This was followed by other stations and developments in space technology until construction began on the ISS in 1998, aided by the first reusable spacecraft ever developed, the American Space Shuttle. The first module of the ISS was named Zarya, or Sunrise. It was developed by Russia. Soon after, the US launched Unity into orbit to attach to Zarya and mark the first two units of the ISS. Today, the ISS has components from the United States, Russia, Japan, Canada, and 11 other countries from Europe. Each of the 15 countries involved have created their own parts and modules that have been added on to the space station each with the same common goal, to conduct scientific research in space and learn as much as we can about the final frontier. By making this goal the combined focus of all 15 countries involved, we can leverage the best abilities each country has to offer and stay on the cutting edge of science and technology. But building the ISS isn't the only thing that took cooperation. The ISS is a permanently occupied station. That means astronauts from different countries are always inhabiting the station year round. Since its first inhabitants in the year 2000, there have been over 240 people from 19 different countries visiting and living on the ISS. The first crew members were from the United States, Russia, and the Ukraine. Not only do they need to learn how to live in space, they need to learn how to live in space with people who are from different countries, who don't share the same customs or even language. Crew members from all participating countries have to go through strict training, mental health checks, and personality testing to ensure that they will be able to work well with the people they are confined with for months on end, regardless of their background. Those aboard the ISS aren't only challenged with getting along while living with strangers. They are also faced with the challenge of working in different modules created by these different countries. Each of the different modules created for the ISS need to make sure that they play nicely with each other. Different technologies, coding languages, tools, and systems have to be able to be integrated seamlessly when a new module is added to the station. Creating and adding different pieces of the ISS takes a lot of communication, collaboration, and the sharing of knowledge between countries to ensure the success of the station. The crews on the ISS have to follow certain rules and guidelines that each country agreed to once they signed the Intergovernmental Agreement, which created a treaty for the ISS. This ensures the collaboration and communication between the crews of different countries runs smoothly and effectively. The crew members on the ISS all speak English in order to communicate with each other. But did you know there's a part of the agreement that says when a crew member is in their own module of the ISS made by their country, they're allowed to speak their native language inside of it. This was brought to the table by Japanese astronauts who cherished their culture and felt it necessary to be able to celebrate their ties to Japan, even while aboard the ISS. So when a Japanese astronaut is in their Kibo module, 
you may find them speaking in their native tongue. Getting along with strangers and living in close quarters for months on end might sound like an extreme challenge, but in reality, it's not much different than the blending of cultures in your classroom. Students from all different backgrounds, customs, nationalities, and languages come to school each day and have to work well in class together. Through a digital breakout, students can leverage the same benefits of an astronaut on the ISS by relying on the knowledge and expertise of those around them. While solving different challenges and unlocking the answers to the different parts of a breakout, students can learn the trials and tribulations of collaborating in a group. Let's see what it looks like from the student side. Hi all, thanks for popping over to join me on the computer so I can show you just a little sneak peek about what a digital breakout might look like from the student perspective. Um, as you can see, I've created this one especially for our Teacher PD series. I have the picture of the International Space Station at the top and I have chosen my theme as a pretty blue color to kind of go with our space and an atmosphere theme. So what I've done here is I've created a Google form and I've turned on two things for each question. I've turned on response validation, which means our students have to get it correct in order to move on. And I've also turned on to make sure that all of the questions are required. So again, they have to answer the question. They have to answer it correctly in order to move on. So this is a great check of knowledge to make sure that they're really understanding the information that you're trying to get through to them. Um, so here's what I want to show you, I'm going to go ahead and type in the answer and I'm going to type it in wrong. So how many countries take part in the International Space Station? I'm going to say 19, not the correct answer. Check this out. When I go to the next one, it tells me I'm wrong. So I've put in something fun and I said, try again. And you can customize what those messages say. Um, but notice that it turns out red and it shows me, hey, you know, you gotta go take another look at that answer. So automatically it tells your students to go back and recheck. And when they get the answer correct, it goes back to its normal color. So now I have a little bit of a hint like, hey, I got it right, I'm ready to move on. So what I've done is I have created this one in different sections. So I am going to breeze through and type in the correct answers so that I can show you how I made the multiple sections. Next. So when you make the multiple sections, you can do fill in the blank type questions, but you can also do a multiple choice question. So with fill in the blank, you're gonna use that response validation. That's not a choice when you use the multiple choice questions. Um, so let me show you how we have that set up. The first country to launch the section of the ISS was Russia, they speak English. How many countries have visited? 17. How many people have lived on and visited the ISS? So I'm gonna say over 100. Not the right answer because I wanna show you what it does and how I've set this up to show our students that we've made an incorrect choice. So it looks right. Um, remember when I did it in the fill in the blank, it turned red and it was like, oh, try again. So this one looks right. And when I hit the next button, it shows me that I have it wrong. Yikes, try that multiple choice question again. So what I've done is I've linked that multiple choice question and each answer that is incorrect, I have linked to this yikes section. But if I say yikes, try again, next, it's gonna take me back. Notice that it kept all of my answers for the fill in the blank, I didn't lose any. But when I get the correct answer chosen and I say next, Ta-da! I finished my breakout, I can submit my form, and I'm good to go. If you want to learn a little bit more about the back end of how to create a digital breakout for your students using Google Forms, um, check out some of our materials and you'll find my how-to video. Thanks! Hopefully, you've learned a little bit about the ISS and honestly, how it relates to you in your everyday classroom. Good luck to you and your students as you break out of this next challenge.